Welcome back, everybody, to this week's edition of the PGA DFS Pick Show. I am your host, John McNutt. I can be found on socials at JohnCool19. I'm here for Fantasy Sports Inside Talking DraftKings Fantasy Golf for this week's AT&T Pebble Beach Pro-Am. Quick shout out to Fantasy National Golf Club. They put together all the stats that I use here on the show, as well as the one and done contest that I'll talk about at the very end. So uh, yeah, great work by those guys. Their site is awesome. If you haven't before, check them out. Fantasy National Golf Club. Uh, they are the best in the business for stat providing. So let's go ahead and jump right into this week's event. We're talking AT&T Pebble Beach Pro-Am. Obviously, in the name, this is a Pro-Am event similar to the American Express from a few weeks back. There will be three courses used in this week's tournament. The Pebble Beach Golf Links will be used once uh, during the first three days, and then all golfers who make the cut, the top 65 in ties, will play there again on Sunday the other two courses used during those first three days are Monterey Peninsula as well as Spyglass Hill. Um, a couple specs on the course, Pebble Beach at 6,900 along with Monterey Peninsula. The uh, Spyglass Hill is a little bit longer at a par about 7,000 yards. Um, both the Spyglass and Pebble Beach are par 72s and that Monterey Peninsula Par 71, it is the easiest of the three courses. Spyglass coming in as the most difficult of those three. If you're trying to watch the first couple events via shot link, there are no shot link data for the Monterey Peninsula and Spyglass. Only on Pebble Beach will be you'll be able to see your golfers shot by shot. And then all day on Sunday, obviously, you will get that as well. Uh, so those are kind of the downside of these three event rotations, as well as this being a pro-am. Expect six to six and a half hour rounds of golf. Uh, something that I factor into my modeling this week is how golfers perform at these pro-ams. There are some guys who just don't like it. Part of that can be seen in this week's field. The field is not good. This is not an elevated event. The PGA Tour did not add more money to the prize pool for this week's event. We will see the next couple of weeks elevated prize pools. Uh, but I think that comboed with this being a program, I think that led a lot of the top tier golfers to go ahead and fade this event and get ready for the next couple uh, to start gearing up for the, uh, the bigger part of the season, the uh, majors part of the season. So... Uh, that being said, uh, the courses themselves, these uh, I'm going to talk mostly about Pebble Beach. They have extremely small greens. It's a relatively short course, so actually one of the shortest on tour at the 6900. Very small greens. The fairways can be difficult to hit here, but the rough really isn't that penal. Um, so we're talking quite a few golfers going to be able to uh, find fairway even from the rough here. The uh, I would say that accuracy is a little bit more than important than distance. If you look hole by hole on this course, there's going to be a lot where golfers are forced to lay up. That just kind of takes away any advantage that the longest hitters have. Um, so certainly uh, 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 shorter hitters that are finding the fairway have absolute um uh, capability of winning this event versus just long hitters. Uh, so don't worry about that this week. Um, this is absolutely a second shot course. I mentioned that, uh, that a lot of golfers are going to be kind of in a layup area. They're not going to be able to go for it in one or really the par fives necessarily as well. So uh, I'm looking at proximity from 100 to 125 yards, lots of shots coming in in that range, as well as around the greens. Like I said, this is some of the smallest greens on tour. Going to be a lot of golfers that are not able to find Find the green uh, for birdie putts. We need to get up and down from there. So factor those in. Approach being my number one stat this week. And then drive accuracy. I'm really kind of putting more emphasis on good drives gained. That is a combination of hitting the fairway or if you slightly miss the fairway, still being able to find the greens in regulation. Uh, a nice stat, again, provided by Fantasy National Golf Club. So I'm including that in my modeling. A couple other things that I'll include is POA putting. All three of these courses are POA grass greens. Uh, and then the last thing, uh, shots gained in windy conditions. If you've ever watched a tournament here at Pebble Beach, you know it. the wind can pick up and be very brutal. can take this course from being difficult to very, very difficult right away. Early forecast has not too much wind the first couple days, but then it really, really picks up on Saturday into Sunday. 
we will look at that right as uh, tea times are announced and as we get into our Wednesday night um, kind of final look at weather to see if there's an advantage to be had by playing golfers that are on a specific rotation of these courses, trying to avoid playing in uh, maybe the easiest course in the toughest of those wins. So uh, all of that uh, will be in our Discord on Wednesday night. At the end of the show, I will put uh, give you all the info to get into the Discord uh, if you'd like to join there. So enough about the course itself courses let's go ahead and jump into my favorite golfers to play on DraftKings this week starting at the very top that is Jordan Spieth at 10,600 he's 11 to 1 outright to win I think that's a fair number for him for a golfer who's absolutely crushed this event in previous years uh, Jordan Spieth has a very good form coming in his last three he has had three events so far this season 52nd 13, he did miss the cut at Sony. So the form is actually okay, but what I'm looking at here, the course history, his last five years, 20th, 45th, and then T9, T3, and second place. Uh, he does have a win and six top 10s in 10 trips here to Pebble Beach. So a lot to like about Jordan Spieth and his ability on this course. I think it fits him very, very well. Um, he rates out really good on comp courses. I included a few, including La Quinta, Port Royal, Golf Club, uh, Torrey Pines North, very similar here, and uh, the Plantation Course at Capilo I included as well. A handful of others also um, that uh, I mentioned in our Discord, uh, but he rates out really well on the comp courses. And then if you kind of dig into the stats here, he's 20th around the greens, 5th, I'm sorry, 7th in par 5 scoring, and he is top 25 in that proximity stat, uh, the 100 to 125 that I mentioned. A lot of people will be flocking to Jordan Speak this week. I think he will be very, very popular on DraftKings. But I think you can, uh, with some comfort, start him in your lineups at 10 6. It's a lot, not cheaper than we saw as the favorite last week. John Rahm was, I think, 11,600. It's getting a little bit of discount for the favorite to win this event, Jordan, this week. Uh, second call for all, I'll put in a lot of my lineups, and that's Seamus Power. He, he is not going to be a chalky player versus some of the others in this range. I like him a lot, though, at 9,800 on DraftKings, 22 to 1 outright. A lot of people I've seen are hammering that. Uh, that and other numbers that they can find a little better. These are DraftKings Sportsbook. Uh, but yeah, Seamus Power is a great outright bet this week. A lot of people will be on that. The form for him, he was a T20 on the DP Tour just a couple weeks ago. He's made seven out of eight cuts already this season. Three of those were top five finishes, and one uh, was a win at the Bermuda, the Butterfield Bermuda Open. Uh, so I like that here. The course history, pretty good for uh, Seamus Power. He was ninth at this course last year. He's made three out of five cuts in his career at this event. Um, but the irons are my one concern. They have not been great lately. What has been great is he is around the green game. He's making up for it. And then some, he's a very, very good uh, in the wind. We know that about Seamus. And for me, this is a leverage play. A lot of the golfers in this price range are, are going to be very, very highly owned. I think Seamus Power comes in a bit under-owned versus those around him here. Um, looking at the stats, he ranks third around the greens in the last 36 rounds, as well as top 10 in that proximity stat, 100 to 125 yards. So these are my favorite two right off the board. One course history the other one much more of a leverage play you could probably jam in both if you're into your lineups if you really want to uh, in order to do so probably need to find some value going down the DraftKings pricing just a little bit I really really like David Lipsky this week I think he's going to be a popular option on DraftKings he's about uh, I think I have him at 70 to 1 actually on the outright betting card right now um, not me personally there is no betting here in the state of Minnesota but I think that is a fair number here for David Lipsky I would be much more interested in a top five and then jam him into your DraftKings lineups as well uh, the form here he's made five out of eight cuts already this season two top tens and uh, he was fourth place at the Sony in January here he was 24th on this course last year, so he's played it a little bit of experience. Uh, I am concerned about the how owned he will be on DraftKings. I think he's getting up there in projected ownership, uh, but I think a lot of people like him for the same reasons. He rates out really, really well for this course. His last 36 rounds, he's top 10 around the greens, top 10 on approach, top five and good drives gained, and then top 15 opportunities gained 
um, and rates out well in that proximity stat also. Uh, so pretty much everything points towards David Lipsky having a good week. Again, only concern being his ownership on DraftKings. So pay attention to that. If you're going to play him, you need to get a little different elsewhere. Uh, but I think a great cash option uh, in your lineups for David Lipsky. Uh, another golfer that I found that uh, a lot of value in, and that is Robbie Shelton. He's 7,800 on DraftKings. He ranks top five overall in my model. So does David Lipsky. But I think Robbie Shelton isn't going to carry the same ownership. He is very good, just like uh, like Lipsky here, around the greens and approach. Uh, both of those heavily weighted in my model. So I'll take both of those guys this week. A couple low-owned pivots, guys, that will help you to make your lineups being unique and to get off of some of the chalk in the uh, price range that these guys are mentioned. First off, Matt Kutcher, this is a very high price for him. I don't like that at all, uh, but because of the field and because of his history, uh, he kind of crept up to 9,400. I don't know the last time we've seen 9,400 Matt Kutcher at an event, but part of that is going to drive his ownership down. Not many people want to pay 9,400 for Matt Kutcher. That's a tough pill to swallow, but there's reasons to do it. First of all, he's going to be a lot less owned than those around him, like Maverick McNeely, Justin Rose, Joel Damon, all those guys much higher owned. Excellent on fast POA greens. He's very good on approach and around the greens. And again, we're not talking where you have to be very long on their distance. Matt Kuchar can get it done. He's got good history on this course. I like him as an option on DraftKings. Uh, and one more golfer I'll mention, and that is Will Gordon. If you were paying attention last week, Will Gordon was owned by everybody. And then he let everyone down. So the missed cut absolutely will drive his ownership down this week. He's going to be probably around 9% owned is what I'm looking at on projections right now. Uh, the low ownership uh, around him is Lanto Griffin, Russell Knox. Both of them will be much more owned than Will Gordon. And then he is very good on par fives. He is very good on that good drives gained stat that I mentioned before. And really prior to last week, the form was excellent for Will Gordon. So hopefully he can kind of turn things around here at Pebble Beach. The last thing to talk about, and that is my one and done selection. Last week didn't go so well. I had Will Zalatoris, and he missed the cut. I was really disappointing. He was very highly owned. A lot of people were on Will last week. Unfortunately, it should have been Max Homa and not Will Zalatoris. Um, so congrats to Max Homa on the performance last week. Uh, but this week, I'm going to go with Andrew Putnam. Reads out really, really well in my modeling. I've seen a lot of people already betting him uh, on their outright cards. I think he has the perfect game. And now really the experience on this course uh, to do very well for my one and done selection. So I will go ahead and stick with that this week. Uh, I appreciate you watching. Please like and share this video. If you have any comments, please leave them here. I'll be happy to answer them as they come in. Uh, for further information about our core plays, as well as a, kind of a weather rundown, ownership projections, all that will be on our Discord. Best way to find that is through our Twitter page at FSI underscore DFS. You can also go through our website, FSIDFS.com. Both of those will link you to the Discord. Uh, it is free to join our Discord. Uh, hopefully you join up and be able to find some of this uh, information here on our golf channel. Um, again, my name is John McNutt. Appreciate you watching and good luck this week.